Hello and welcome to Java Games Programming. I'm your host Zan from Zan's Gaming and in this tutorial we'll actually use what we've learned so far and begin working on our game of Snakes and Ladders. So let's get started. If you fail to plan, you're planning to fail. I'm not exactly sure who said that but if you do, uh, please let me know in the comments below. However, for our game we actually need to plan before we get started. In simpler projects like these, I'll take, I like to think of uh, the planning phase in three simple steps. First step is to figure out what are the entities involved in this project. Then we convert these entities into a classes and then figure out how these classes interact with one another. So in this game of snakes and ladders, sometimes also known as uh, shoots and ladders, we have the entities involved that are the world itself, which contains everything. Um, there is the game board, there is the die, or the d6, and the players between one to four, two to four uh, usually. But uh, since we are making it our version, we can have it between one to four players. Now, how are the conversions going to do? Each entity can be a class of its own. So uh, going back here, the world itself, um, that's just the basic driver program or the driver class. The game board, that's a class of its own containing the board. The die is a class of its own and the players are a class of their own. So instead of using uh, four different, different uh, player classes, we just create one player class and just uh, create four different player objects. Once we have all the classes down, we can actually work with the, the interaction of how these projects will, how these classes will interact with one another. So we have that the world contains the board and the player. The players share a d6. Um, the player uh, roll the die on their turn. And then after each turn, the board moves the player appropriate uh, to the next appropriate spot. So this is meaning uh, based on the die roll, they move that many spots. And then if there's a ladder or a snake, they move to the next available spot. Now that we have the plan so far, uh, we can actually get started with the, the skeletal of the code. Here we have the skeletal version of the code. We have our four classes as described earlier. We have our world class, which is now known as snakes and ladders. We have our game board, or just the board. We have the die and the player. Now, since you mentioned earlier, everything takes place in the world. We have the world itself, or our class snakes and ladders, which is running the main game loop. And the way it does it, it first prompts the welcome, uh, prints a welcome message for the user. We prompt the user for the number of players that are playing. We initialize the player classes, we initialize the board, and now we have a loop which keeps going until the end condition is reached. In our case, the end condition is when one of the players reaches the final spot. And during each iteration of the loop, uh, the player takes their turn, they roll a die, and they move to the appropriate next spot on the board. The board here has a few more details. We have the board itself uh, described as a 2D integer array. We have an array of player locations. So each numeric value here represents their um, corresponding player's location. So the first index represents the first player, second index represents the second player, and so on. We have a 2D array of uh, for snakes. So this is the indices are describing uh, where it starts, and then the second index describes where the, the, the snake ends, and the same thing for the ladders. And then we have a constructor to initialize these fields. And a method in our board class which uh, allows us to move the player. So we have the player as an object, as an argument, and the value, meaning the how many spaces to move, as, an, uh, as a second argument. Now this method returns true if the player has reached the final position, so they've reached the hundredth spot, otherwise it returns false. This will be used as our check end condition um, flag. The die itself, we have we use the random class provided by Java to simulate a die. We have a constructor for it, as, of, as always, and a method which allows us to roll a d6. Last but not least, we have our player class, which has access to the die. We declared this die static because, as we said earlier, all players share the same die. And a player has a method which allows us to take turn. Now what you're seeing here is the skeletal version of the code, as I mentioned. Um, the actual method bodies haven't been populated yet, but at least we know what the methods are doing. We may not know exactly how they're doing things, but we know what they're doing. 
and this is essentially setting up our project. In the next tutorial, we will fill out the body of the code and go over what's actually happening and we'll do a playtest as well. This has been Zan from Zan's Gaming. Hope you enjoyed this uh, tutorial. See you next time.